Welcome to my January wrap up. So there was some things that I had to post in the beginning of February because I got a little bit delayed because I moved in the beginning of January. So now we are getting to my January wrap up and I will be posting a February wrap up in two weeks. I think I'm gonna post a TDR for March and then a February wrap up. So I'm very excited that I'm getting back to like my regularly scheduled programming when it comes to booktube because it's it's the bread and butter, it's the stable, right? So let's talk about all I read in January to start and then you can look forward to February in two weeks. So in January I read 13 books and let's talk about them. So I started off the year with wrapping up A Kingdom of Blood and Betrayal by Holly Renee, which is the sequel to A Kingdom of Stars and Shadow, which is one of the last books I read last year and this is going to be a trilogy and I'm very excited to own them all. Um, this is just such a fun spicy fantasy romance series. It's pretty light on the plot but heavy on the spice, so if that's what you're looking for in your fantasy romance, like, this is the book for you. So in A Kingdom of Stars and Shadow we follow Adara and she is star blessed or star marked which in this world means that she pretty much has like these, they look like freckles but they're star shaped across her, the bridge of her nose, like a regular freckle pattern and all down her back and this basically means that she holds the power to kind of like be an amplifier for the Fae. So she's raised in the human kingdom but she has entered into this bargain or her parents have entered into this bargain with the Fae Prince that they will like live in comfort in the human world and then he will come for her when it's time for them to get married. So she basically has been dreading this her whole life but then they come for her and she has no choice and she winds up there. She basically ends up like being really attracted to the king's half-brother and he is the captain of the guard and he's the one that's kind of like has the responsibility of leading her around the castle and she feels like an immediate pull to him and she doesn't like necessarily like she knows she has to marry the prince but yet she can't help feeling drawn to this like other half-breed prince basically half-breed because his mother is someone else that's not a fae it was really good um very heavy on the spice but like just from pure enjoyment it was this one i rated five stars and this one i would also rate five stars maybe 4.75 because it's not super heavy on the plot but i just i just enjoy a good spicy time in a fantasy world and something about the fantasy world really raises the stakes and makes the spicy times that much more fun or maybe it's just because you can get inventive with like different species and things but this one was like a good a good middle book i think it really set up for an explosive finale and again like they're pretty short they're like 250 pages and it just it's the perfect length for what it does and if you go into it expecting what it is going to be it's great for what you want out of it which is a fast paced fun spicy time i loved Everin, the prince and adara like their chemistry was so good he has a dirty mouth he does a lot of dirty talking and it's great and the vibes. The vibes were immaculate. Five out of five stars. Then I finished up my audiobook of Falling for the Highlander by Lindsay Sands and this was an audiobook that I just like randomly picked up um, and now that the HarperCollins strike is over I can release my reviews for the Avon slash HarperCollins titles so that's very exciting. The so in this one we follow Lady Marine Carmichael and she's basically living with her stepbrother in England and so Dougal and his brothers come to like trade horses and the brother is in debt from gambling so he's like you can take my sister for a ride basically and then so she hears this and like runs away um and then of course Dougal and his brothers refuse to do this and so they leave and they run into her on the road as she's leaving then they decide to take her in and Maureen and Dougal like they start to just like feel things for each other I gave this like a 3.5 slash 4 stars it, it felt very like basic historic romance. It didn't do anything that super wowed me, but I had a good time reading it. Maureen and Dougal, like I just love a good Highland romance. I love like the Highland dialects when they're speaking and especially being an audiobook, it was very immersive so it made it more fun that way. There was, you know, like a touch of more action adventure going on at the end here. So uh, overall, pretty good time reading it and again like four, sitting at a 3.54 out of five stars. Next, I reread The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So basically my plan was to reread all of these books in preparation for The Stolen Heir. However, I got some like bad personal news and I was really not in the mindset for fantasy and like like more, I guess, heavy young adult fantasy. So I kind of abandoned that reread. I will get back to it one day. I don't really want to go into like what happened, but like personally I'm fine and I'm kind of like getting back in my groove, but I was like 
pretty like I just went on like a whole romance tangent which you will see soon in this wrap up but yes my third reread of The Cruel Prince and it's just so perfect every time. If you don't know what The Cruel Prince is about, one, like where have you been living these past few years? Because this is like one of the most popular books on booktube, but I digress. This is the story of Jude and when she's seven, her parents are murdered by Madoc, a fairy general, and he takes her and her sisters to the land of fairy, and now her and her twin have to live as mortals in this realm. And Jude really wants to like blend in with the fairies and earn their respect and so she really wants to become a knight and then also her enemy in this land is Prince Cardin. He's just very like callous and cruel and when a place in court she basically has to defy him and it's like their story and their journey and it was just it was just so good. Every time I've read it it's so good. I just like love how Jude is like power hungry and has kind of been shaped by this world and these circumstances that she's been thrust into but like doesn't apologize for being like an angry woman and the way that she is and she's so like manipulative and clever and I adore every second and then of course Cardin like I just love their dynamic. It's great. It's it's just everything that I have ever wanted in a book basically and this is like definitely one of my top YA books. Cruel Prince, five stars forever. I definitely need to like go back and finish my reread of The Wicked King but we'll see where life takes me. So then I read The Lost Sister by Holly Black which is a novella that is basically like from Taryn's point of view who's Jude's twin during the events of The Cruel Prince and it kind of like explains what she's been up to and um Taryn is a snake I didn't rate this because it's like a novella that's kind of like supplementary to the book so I don't feel the need to rate it but um yes Terrence Snake this didn't like make me like her anymore like I guess I kind of understood where she's coming from but that doesn't mean I have to like like her for it so that's that. The next book that I read was for a book club that I have with my college friends so this is a book I wouldn't normally pick up but I'm glad that I did pick it up and it's called The, per the Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. So this is a fictionalized account of a woman's life and this woman is Belle DaCosta Green and she's a personal librarian to J.P. Morgan you know of the, the banker J.P. Morgan and it takes place in the early 1900s but one of the things that I guess most people didn't really know about her was that she was actually a black woman that was white passing and so she used that to her advantage to gain status in life and like as J.P. Morgan's personal librarian like she really got access to a lot of like elite New York social circles and she used her charms and her wit to navigate her way through life as a black woman passing as a white woman. And so I ended up giving this book four stars. I feel like it was, I listened to it on audiobook and I feel like it was so interesting to really see like how she personally struggled with the fact that she was trying to make this life for herself but the life was a lie but it was a lie because she couldn't be herself in that time period. She wouldn't be allowed the privileges that she had being J.P. Morgan's personal librarian. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I liked the talk of like the art auctions and like the library auctions and like trying to complete this collection. I do kind of struggle with fictionalized accounts of people's lives because I'm like what if this like isn't what happened really and like no one will ever know the truth and like we can try and dig and then I don't know I just find it weird to like read a fiction book based off of someone's real life but I did enjoy my time and I feel like I learned a lot. <laughs> the next books that I read were some novellas and this was really um I just kind of went off the deep end and just wanted something quick and smutty and spicy and this just seemed intriguing at the moment. <laughs> the first one is Dom Fitness by Brianna Hale. And the premise of it is that they're like personal trainers that use BDSM tactics to like motivate people to work out. And basically this girl like gets a personal trainer and they like clearly like cross the line between client and trainer and like become something more. And I don't even think I'm gonna rate this one it was a novella um but I was just I was reading it for a specific reason and that reason was spice and the desire was fulfilled was it the best spice ever no it it was just there and it was just something to take my mind off of my life um same thing with the sequel Jim Bunny by Rihanna Howell the one I liked about this one was that it was a plus size woman and it was the emphasis on not exercising to like change your body but just like to enjoy a movement and like the trainer like he was just like obsessed with her and loved her the way she was and like wasn't trying to get her to change even though he was a personal trainer it was more so just like 
about like overall health and wellness and not about how your body looks so I appreciated that message but um I was there for the spice and it was an interesting experience <clears throat> okay next flawless by Elsie Silver I haven't seen this everywhere and I'm like you know what I need at this time in my life is a cowboy so I read this cowboy romance and it really just like delivered on everything that it said it would be so we follow summer and Rhett and Rhett is like this rebellious bull rider and he's like the world championship bull rider like one of the best bull riders in the world and he basically has been going on this like bad boy streak and his like reputation is tarnished so there comes summer she works for her dad's pr firm and like her dad is the agent for this guy and so her dad's like you need to babysit this man and make sure that he does not have any more public incidents before the world championships because he's going to lose all of his sponsorships so she basically goes to his farm and lives there and like tries to keep him under control and guys the tension between these two is written so good and you really like learn to see like what is on the outside of these characters and how people perceive them is not like what they're like really and you just they just start to like break down each other's walls and like you are on this like ranch setting and it's like the perfect small town and like I just wanted pack my bags and move to a ranch and like become a cowgirl and I just love the cowboy vibes it was so fun it was just a really sweet romance but also cowboys I'm into cowboys now that's a thing you get the cowboy hat you get like the setting of like the ranch and all the like stuff that go I don't know what really goes on on a ranch but all the stuff that goes on a ranch the bull riding let me tell you the emotional toll that it would take on me to have a partner be a bull rider where they're literally like putting their lives at risk on these crazy ass bulls is like insane and I thought that that tension and uh, that suspense was written so well like a bull riding like apparently it only takes eight seconds on the bull and then you're like rated on that but like that has to be like the most gut-wrenching eight seconds of your life basically and I like how like the family dynamic was written I just thought it was like a perfect small town cowboy romance I thought it was just so well done and really um I will be back for more from Elsie Silver because I really thoroughly enjoyed this and of course Flawless got five stars from me so then the next book I read was the next book in the series which is Heartless by Elsie Silver, Silver and this is about Cade Eaton who's Rhett's brother and he is a single father um, and he's working on the ranch and kind of basically taking on the the responsibilities of like owning the ranch and running it and um, he has a small child Luke his mother basically like abandoned him and so we have Willa who is Summer's like very free-spirited best friend and they're like hey like we need a babysitter for Luke for the summer like maybe you can take the job and she's just like sure and she like Kate is like so like truly a grumpy sunshine romance like he's like so like just beaten down by life and very closed off and Willa is like this bright chaotic feisty person and they butt head so much especially when it comes to like the care of Luke because like obviously Kate is like very protective of him but Willa like really gets him to open up and the relationship between Willa and Luke was so cute and I love when like the child because the child is part of the family dynamic and like I really like that there was an emphasis on how like Willa and like Luke really like formed a bond first before Willa and Cade form a romantic relationship I just thought it was so well done I don't actually know if I've read a lot of single dad romances before this but I felt like it was really done in such a way that it was like so so good so of course five stars next I pivoted to The Fine Print by Lauren Asher literally just like I was hitting up all of the well-known contemporary romances from Book Talk. This one follows Rowan and Zara, and Rowan is basically the heir to multi-billion dollar conglomerate um, that's supposed to be like Disney, and so his grandfather dies, and in the will he's like, if you want to inherit your portion of the company, you have to go and become the director of the parks, which is Dreamland, kind of like Disneyland, um, and it takes place in Orlando, so it's like Disney World. Um, and basically like come up with some sort of innovation or thing that has been missing in the park and he was like wow I really don't want to do this I'm very grumpy but then he goes to the parks and then we also have Zara who like her family is very involved in working for the parks and so she's worked there for a long time and she wants to become a creator which is kind of like an imagineer and she has a lot of ideas for how the park could work but she doesn't necessarily have the right education for it um, but she's been working in the park for a very very long time so they do this thing when he's like trying to innovate the park is they open up submissions from employees to 
say their piece about what they think needs to change and so Zara gets drunk and submits a proposal like basically tearing one of the rides apart and then he loves this so much that he's like okay you're hired you're a creator now and then they they butt heads constantly because they're working together on this project and she's like so sunshiny and he's like so closed off and grumpy but yet he like she like just breaks through his walls and I loved 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 the setting of dreamland I think if you're a Disney fan like you will love this just like the theme park nostalgia was so good and like of course he's a billionaire so like the things that he's doing like when her over like I guess he doesn't quite understand a lot of things from her perspective because he like grew up a billionaire but she like really like teaches him like puts him in his place and their romance was so sweet I loved it if you like billionaire romances like this is just this is a great one billionaire romance set to the background of Disney theme parks I mean what more could you ask for so of course I gave it five stars so then continuing on I read Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher, which is the second book in the trilogy, and this one follows the um, oldest brother, Declan, and so he is set to become the CEO of the company, but in his grandfather's will, he's like, Declan needs to get married and have a kid. So clearly, like, their grandfather, like, was really kind of trying to manipulate them from beyond the grave. Declan has his assistant, Iris, try to find him a wife, and she's, like, interviewing all these wives, and it's just, like, it keeps falling through, so then she's like, I'll marry you like I've known you for years like I can just like be your wife and like help you get your CEO position and so it's like an arranged marriage marriage of convenience kind of trope and it's so good because Declan is so like strict and like to the point and Iris really helps uh, like I think ground him a little bit and it's just like the whole tension of like they're in this arranged marriage and like they like they're like oh like we don't have feelings for each other but they like clearly obviously have feelings for each other and like the tension was just written so well and like it was so cute and I really enjoyed the emphasis on Iris and her personal development of how she's always kind of like kept herself like down like saying that she couldn't like achieve something but then she's also like worked really really hard to be Declan's assistant and Declan is like the one that gave her a chance and for her to like expand her goals and then she's kind of like thinking like what does she want beyond just like being his assistant in life and I like that she like really went after her own dreams and how in the end they ended up supporting each other and it was just amazing and five out of five stars because I'm a sucker. And the next book I read was another book talk favorite and that is Hooked by Emily McIntyre and it's a modern day retelling of Peter Pan but obviously Hooked is the love interest so we have Wendy and her father owns Pan Air or something like that so her father is supposed to be Peter Pan-esque and then we have James and he's known as Hook because he like ca carries a carved knife so he's you know part of the uh, organized crime in their small New England town and so they move there and she basically gets like drawn into his world because she is the daughter of his enemy but he cannot resist her and it's their romance and I enjoyed this I gave it like 3.5 slash 4 stars um because I felt like I don't know it's kind of I felt like it was like fine um and the spice was good but I really wish there was kind of maybe more development in some of the aspects of the story of like why these characters have these like issues with each other like yes it was explored but I don't know I felt like it was a little bit surface level for me and I would have liked a deeper exploration of the things that were going on but in terms of like spice and fun times and action it was there I I do think also one of my gripes with this is that I kind of wish that the connection between James and Wendy was like deepened a little bit before they got into like the two spicy times because it felt a little insta lovey for me. I don't I don't necessarily like hate that, but I just wish it was developed more, basically. So four four stars for me, because it was still a fun time. And I probably will continue on with the series because I just think it's fun. And finally, the last book I read in January was Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. I have been wanting to read this book basically since I saw the cover because we have this like these Vikings and it's beautiful and What's great about this story is that both of the main characters are fat and I feel like in fiction sometimes it's either just like the the woman is like the fat main character um, and th this is like how they describe themselves in the book. They describe themselves as fat. Um, so anyways, so this is in the same universe as Spoiler Alert, which I bought the other two books because I love this one so much. And they, um, so it's Maria 
and Peter and they have a one night stand because they see each other in a spa and they're so like enchanted and then she goes to an audition for Gods of the Gates which is the Game of Thrones-esque show in this universe and he's there and is auditioning beside her and like so basically like after their one night stand it's really awkward and then they have to go and film on a remote island in like the middle of nowhere Ireland for like six years together so it's very like starts off with a one night stand but then it becomes slow burn because then they're like we just need to like not make this awkward we don't know how long we're going to be like filming for it really dives into like the development of their characters and the way that they handle fame and the way that they handle fame and being a fat actor and i just think it explored so many topics so well like i i don't know i just feel like them being like in the spotlight in hollywood it even mentioned like obviously because the first book like deals a lot with fan fiction like it was like people writing fan fiction of their characters i thought was so hilarious but also like the people making like fan edits of them wanting them to get together and like they weren't together yet and i just feel like it was such a like such well done like pining for each other through like the years set to the backdrop of hollywood and like how do you deal with the expectations of your family like it was just very emotional and very touching and i loved it guys i loved it it was so good it gave everything that i needed to give and i loved it five out of five stars Yay! I'm so happy I finally did my first wrap-up in a really long time and hopefully I will post 12 wrap-ups this year for every month. I'm hoping that you guys can hold me accountable to that. Even if I read one book a month, I will post wrap-up, which I've been reading like pretty normally so I, I have more than one book to talk about. But I just think I need to get back to the staples of booktube so I, I will be posting more wrap-ups. So let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what your thoughts are on them, if you agree with my reviews or not. I don't know, we can get a little feisty in the comments if you want. Um, and leave some like swords in the comments if you've gotten this far because I'm feeling very like shipwrecked viking-esque and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>